Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. I hope you're doing well. We are just about to the end of application season. The last state is Arizona deer and sheep. And we're gonna give you a video here, overview of how it works, very similar to the video we did on elk and antelope. And want you to know that these videos are brought to you by Go Hunt. If you wanna be a member of the Insider, go sign up, use promo code Randy, and they'll give you $50 in their gear shop. But what you need to know here is one very important date, June 8th, 2021. 11.59 Arizona time is the deadline. Arizona doesn't give you any mulligans or you can come around six months later and buy your points. If you miss it, not, not good, really not good. So we're not gonna talk about bison and some of the other uh, tags that you can apply for. Here we're talking about deer, in this case, the white, little white-tailed deer called cow's deer technically, but we'll use the term coos deer, uh, mule deer, and desert bighorn and Rocky Mountain bighorn. So the downside of Arizona right now is they are in the midst of the worst drought they've had in over 30 years. It's been a couple years in the making, and this is like a replay of 2000, 2001, 2002. And if you were around back then applying in Arizona, you know what they did. They cranked the tag numbers way down during the drought because the, the fawn recruitment was really bad. And in the elk space, the, the calf recruitment is suffering. So Arizona should be complimented for the fact that when this stuff happens, they respond and they react. And if we look in the rear view mirror, come about 2003, four, five, six, Moisture's getting better and better. Guess what? They're cranking the tag numbers back up. So uh, with this bad drought, you're definitely going to notice that Arizona's gonna have to do some tag cuts, but they can't control the moisture. They can only control the human harvest. So that's what they're doing. Think about that as you consider what your plan is for Arizona in a year that if they don't get moisture, this is gonna be the worst drought in 40 or 50 years. Fingers crossed that when the monsoons come in July, they actually come. So, costs. Arizona makes you buy an upfront hunting license. Maybe you've already done that because you applied in the elk and antelope draw. If you haven't, it's gonna cost you 160 bucks and they go on a calendar or a, a full year license. So if you buy it today, exactly 365 days from now is when your license expires. If you have a youth hunter in your house, it's only five bucks for a non-resident. And I say this all the time, people will question me, how did your son end up with all these points in Arizona? Well, when he was a kid, I was buying him these $5 youth licenses and building points for him. Don't overlook that if you have a young hunter in your house. And in Arizona, you gotta be 10 years, to, 10 years old to apply. So you got that as an upfront cost. Every species you apply for, say it's deer, say it's sheep, that's another $15 per species. So my application, all right, $160 license, I already got that covered. $15 for sheep, $15 for deer. And then they have another feature called Point Guard, and it's five bucks. And what Point Guard does is if something happens, you know, work event, family event, some, some reason you wanna turn your tag back in, you can do that, get your points restored and get a point for this year, but you can only do it once per species. So that could be another upfront cost if you wanna do that. If you luck out and you draw, which we all hope we do, uh, the fee in Arizona for deer is 300 bucks. Uh, for either the Rockies or the deserts is 1800 bucks. The system, they call it a bonus point system in Arizona of, of how, it draw, how they do their draw. I'm gonna call it a modified point system. It's a little bit of both, and I'll try to explain it. So they break their draw into two draws. And if you really wanna see good diagrams of this, go out to Go Hunt, they're insider. They explain it really, really good with all these visuals. But the first part of the draw, 20% of the tags go over into that draw. And we all, we're all in that draw, but they, those 20% of tags go to the highest point holders for each hunt code. So you can have some units where there's so few tags for sheep that in this first part of the draw, pretty much all the tags are gone. 
because 20 percent of all the tags are over here and then they go by point holder who's the highest point holder okay this person oh they had this tag and then next oh this tag until 20 percent of the tags are gone now in that part of the draw the non-resident cap of 10 percent only half of it can be used up in that part of the draw any unused portion of the non-resident 10 percent cap then goes over into the second part of the draw so we all go over in this first part. If you're a low point holder like I am for deer, well, guess what? You're not going to draw. And I probably am too low of a point holder for sheep at 20 or 21 points to draw in the first part of the draw. So all of us who didn't draw over here in this 20%, when they kind of convert your bonus points to preference points, they then take all of us and they put us over in the second part of the draw. The second part of the draw is for the other 80% of the tags and it's a true bonus point system. In other words, if you have 10 points and I have one point, you get 10 raffle tickets, I get one raffle ticket. And your odds of drawing are that much higher because of that, or your probability. So in the second part of this draw, this is where the 10% total cap comes into play. Now, Arizona doesn't guarantee non-residents 10% of the tags like Utah or uh, Nevada we are competing with residents and we may not get to the 10 percent cap but let's use the example that over here in the first part three percent of the tags went to non-residents that means over here in the second part up to seven percent could come out of this draw so that the sum of the two draws can never exceed 10 percent we might not get to 10 percent but we'll never exceed 10 percent so hopefully that makes sense when you're going into the Arizona draw, there's two ways you can earn additional bonus points. One, you can go there and take the non-resident hunter education class. You actually have to go there and take it in person. Uh, it's a one day class and that stays with you forever and for all species. And then they have a loyalty point that says after five years, you've demonstrated you're a loyal customer. For any species where you've applied for five years in a row, after that fifth year, they give you a loyalty point. And as long as you continue to apply for that species, your loyalty point stays intact. So I'll use an example for deer. Last year, I drew deer in Arizona. Most people say, oh, your points went to zero. Nope, they're at two because I have my hunter ed point and I still have my loyalty point. So. That's another way you can get some points in Arizona to get a little bit more leverage in your favor. Uh, one of the beautiful things about Arizona is the amount of public land. It is a crazy amount of public land. I think when I looked, if you count in the state land, it's getting close to a little over 64, 65%. I, I could have that wrong, but just understand, there's a lot of places to go hunting in Arizona. Most of the places you're going to want to hunt, you're not going to see many, no trespassing signs. Uh, you can just buy a point if you want to, but it costs the same to buy a point as it does to apply. So in my mind, I'm like, if I'm going to pay this $15 fee to build a point, why wouldn't I throw my name in the hat and maybe this is the year I get, you know, my lucky number comes up in the bonus pile. So uh, you can just do that if you've got some really serious complications with your calendar. But there's a lot of deer hunts and pretty much every sheep hunt in Arizona. My calendar could never get that complicated that I wouldn't go. So just actually apply. Um, you'll see that in most of the deer hunts, there's enough uh, tags that the non-resident quota, there's always going to be some non-resident tags that, that end up in the draw, even after the 10% non-resident cap and after the 20% high point holder draw. Uh, but in some of the sheep units, that's not the case. Some of the sheep units have so few tags that by the time they start whittling down from the highest point holder to the next highest to the next highest, that some of the sheep quotas are already filled over here. And you can see that by looking at last year's numbers. So if you go out to go hunt, you'll see that in the draw information. Don't waste one of, if you're a low point holder and you're not at the top of the pile, don't waste one of your choices 
on a unit that already gets all the tags allocated at that early part of the draw. Now, I said one of your choices. Arizona gives you a whole bunch of choices, but we just focus on the first two because anything after that is usually not a tag you're gonna want. And Arizona looks at choice number one and choice number two before they go on to the next person. So like a lot of these states that allow multiple options, I make my first choice really hard. And then my second choice is always one that, well, I'd still be happy to go. So think about that as a strategy of how you use those two choices. It'll increase your odds dramatically. Um, a lot of people want to know, well, if I were to draw and I had a conflict, can I return a tag? Yes, Arizona allows that uh, a parent or guardian uh, who can, if, if you've been issued the tag, you can transfer that tag to a minor child who is between age 10 and 17 on the date of the transfer. And Arizona also allows you to transfer your tag to, they have some nonprofit groups. Uh, and my buddy Tom Wagner does a ton of work with this. If, you, if you're interested in transferring your tag to one of these nonprofit groups that provides opportunities for uh, people with life-threatening medical conditions and such, let me know. I'll put you in touch with Tom. He, he knows all the people. Uh, and then there's the point guard thing that I talked about. You can use that once and use it judiciously. I don't, I don't see myself using point guard even though I pay for it. Uh, some people ask, are there any short-term options in Arizona? The answer for sheep is no, there are no short-term options. Right, I'm at 20 or 21 points. I'm still not even close. There's not a tag in Arizona for sheep that I have even a 1% chance at. So no short-term options for sheep. For deer, there are some short-term options. Some of the, the whitetail hunts, the cows, coos, whitetail hunts, you can draw with one or two points. Uh, and there's a lot of over-the-counter whitetail hunts. Now, there used to be some that were mule deer hunts that were over-the-counter, but with the drought and everything else, they're cranking some of those down this year. So pay attention to the regulations. And the other thing that often happens when game and fish has to reduce seasons in certain places, it displays as people who, oh, I used to always hunt that over-the-counter hunt. Now you might have a little more crowding in some of the other hunts. So just be thinking about that and pray for rain. Because if we get rain in Arizona, these tag numbers are going to get bumped back up here in the next power, you know, short period of time. Uh, and then lastly, people say, is Arizona worth it? Absolutely, Arizona is worth it. Especially if you like to hunt other species like I do. I, I like to go down there and hunt javelina. I like to hunt quail, dove, all, everything, small game. And then I also can use it to apply, like I did in February, for antelope and for elk. For elk, there's some midterm options for these late rifle hunts. And since I'm already in the game for that, I'd be a fool not to be in the game for deer and sheep and everything else. And even if you don't do that, maybe you have some other state as your short or midterm option. I can't think of a better state to have as your long-term option than Arizona. Because I don't care what species it is, if you are applying for one of the long shot, hard to draw tags for sheep, for elk, for deer, for antelope, you're gonna want that tag in Arizona. <laughs> just trust me on that one. And uh, it's, it's just a remarkable state. Like I said, so much access, access so much opportunity. Uh, they do a great job of managing down there. Um, so that's, that's kind of it, folks. Arizona is pretty simple, very similar to what we talked about in February with elk and antelope. If you want more details, go out to Go Hunt, sign up to be an insider. Their strategy articles cover way more than what I gave right here. Just don't miss that deadline, June 8th at 11.59 p.m. on 2021. Don't miss that deadline. And if you do sign up for the insider, use promo code Randy and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. Mostly, don't miss a deadline, apply, and good luck.